sitting over here, I'm working on show notes, and the uh, bump music ended. The intro music's over already. I guess I better get myself, uh, get my stuff together. What do you think? I try not to think. It hurts my yeah. brain. You know, some people have said they're like, Paul, you, you don't need to say who you are every time that you do a show because we listen to you every day. But, folks. We've got new listeners. Yeah. Every day, depending on the topic, we have new listeners. And now some some topics are like super hot in their you know current and they're in the news, and so people are like oh that that's in the news I want to listen to that. Now obviously you and I know that that people should listen every single day religiously, uh, that's just the way it should be. But occasionally we get new folks will drop in and they just give us a listen. They're like who's this dude? So I am Professor Paul Markle. Thanks for joining me for Student of the Gun Radio on the other side of the board there with the dual monitors. He's dual wielding his monitors. You are and that would be Jared. Interesting to me. I am Jared. Yeah. I'm Jared Markle. And uh the dude that's talking to the other microphone is my father. Not and my not my brother. Yeah, not my brother to all of you who think that that is the case sometimes. Uh, it's not true. <laughs> However, I, see, I don't know when people say that, I don't know. It's a compliment to you, obviously, but uh-huh. I don't know if They're it's like, you, hey, wow, you look old. You look old or, or what? Maybe you look mature. That's what it is. You look mature. Yeah, I'll go with that one. Yeah. So if I shave my face, I'll look like a baby. You look like a baby face. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, uh, let's let's get into it. And the story of the or the title of this one is "Ban Night Vision." And you're like, what? Ban night vision? How are you going to ban something like that? Well, you. We've already established the precedent in the United States that you peasants can't be trusted with certain items because only the state is responsible enough to possess certain items, uh, you know, such as uh, standard capacity magazines. And, and like such as. Like such as, so, you know, maps and so forth. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off in the middle of this. I had to. <laughs> you just. You just. Uh, did you channel Miss South Carolina yes, there for a I second? Did. You were channeling Miss South Carolina. I channeled her. Like, so, you want to know the truth? The other night, somehow, I ended up watching that on my phone again. Really? Like, as in such as. You shouldn't tell people what you do uh-huh. in your bedroom. <laughs> Shut up, That's idiot. wrong. So I want to. I just want to say one thing. And no, you. All right, you're going to say this one thing after I say this one thing. I can't believe that we haven't used that clip on the radio. <laughs> oh, we probably could do that. Well, yeah, you guys can look forward to that because I think uh, uh, a lot of you probably haven't heard. The a lot of you don't. Response. A lot of you don't have maps. US citizens don't have maps. They, you don't stuff. have maps, so you can't find the United States because you don't have a map. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to say that I would be okay with banning night vision. Do you want to know why? Why? Because cats have night vision. Oh, you want to ban cats? Yeah, okay. but you can't you can't ban cats if you're not going to ban night vision. Oh, na- well, maybe it's manufactured versus uh, natural night vision. Uh, so anyway, let's let's go ahead and talk about this. Well, the reason that that's, that stupidity like this actually comes up and is the reason that elected public officials that are supposed to be public servants and representatives of the people, the reason that this comes up is because we've already established a precedent that peasants, that's you, you you're the peasant, that you can't be trusted with certain items. And so the government has the authority, they've granted themselves the authority to tell you what things you're allowed to have and what things you're not allowed to have because you're just so stupid and, you know, basically untrustworthy. You're like a child. You're like little Jimmy, the retarded neighbor boy. And we just have to pat you on the head and say, that's nice, Jimmy. I'm going to take this and I'm going to pin it up on the refrigerator so that everyone can see it. Now, you go sit in the corner and you play. Well, this story comes to us from Amoland.com, Dateline, West Virginia. Maybe you're thinking about owning night vision. Well, the state apparently doesn't want you to. But they're not going so far as to ban night vision. They only want to ban it if you happen to own a firearm. Excuse me? Baking powder? Uh, night vision is very expensive and extremely useful technology. It gives the, the, uh, 
night back to mankind. You can use it in a million ways and a million things in the dark and so forth. And uh, it's and the big thing is is you can kill hogs in Texas with night vision and it's awesome. But uh, a new bill disguised as a poaching bill, but we know better, says uh, that we can tell you because hunting deer at night is already illegal. No, 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 no. Okay. This, this story is kind of arduous. You need to get to the point, whoever wrote this story. Oh, it's the West Virginia Citizens Defense League. You need to get somebody else to write your, your uh, articles for you. But <laughs> let's get to the, the nut of it. And the nut says da, 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 that if you own a firearm, representatives uh, Alan Evans... Bill Hamilton and Robert Carnes want to make it illegal for you to also own night vision. So you can own night vision if you don't own a gun. But if you own a gun, then you're not allowed to do that. Because if you own both night vision and a firearm at the same time, that makes you a de facto poacher. And of course it does. I mean, why would you want to have that? And this is what we're going to get from the the uh, the liberal do good or elitists they're going to say well what do you need that for to see in the dark duh well why why do you need that now apparently in west virginia there was never any poaching apparently poaching never occurred and poaching the not eggs here the illegal hunting of an animal now i'm hungry uh, apparently it never occurred until the invention and the availability of night vision. So let's say, you know, I guess that that affordable night vision really didn't start coming on the market until the 90s. It was kind of crappy in the 90s, but uh, 90s to 2000s, you can actually buy stuff for you know a few thousand dollars. That's good. I remember when civilian available night vision came out, and uh, it was terrible. You you could look through it for maybe 30 seconds without getting a headache. Because it was all fuzzy and blurry and it never focused properly. And you could see like blurry images moving around. Today, it's yeah. like watching TV in, in black, gray, and green. See, I'm spoiled because I never had to use the blurry stuff. Yeah, you never had to use like the Gen 1, Gen 2 stuff. Ugh, it was, yeah, when it was I, terrible. When I got to use the night vision in Texas over there, it was uh, it was, it was very clear. Yeah, I think I, I had it on my face for probably an hour Oh yeah, you can. Uh, what they the military use they call them nods now. That's the the vernacular, the the lingity that that pipe hitters use for night vision. They call them nods, um, like a night optic device, night vision optic device, or something like that. Anyway, long story short, is this and this is the weird thing about West Virginia, and this goes back to remember we did the story about the the mayor of Wheeling, West Virginia, who was like just all a Twitter because the concealed carriers are going to be allowed to have their guns on like public property or state property. And he was just, he was peeing in his, his little panties because the thought of that a, remember was they were going to be able to pick their kids up from daycare and it would be legal for them to have their concealed carry gun uh, on them. Near kids. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He was, and he was like, you can't have guns near near schools because like, here this the deal. world it's, will end. It's on my body, so yeah. shut up. Well, the, and what we pointed out at the time was this dude had a capital R behind his name, and he was behaving like a capital D. <laughs> uh, and these <laughs> these people here, uh, the, the the people that have sponsored the, this bill, they all have R's behind their name. So. What the freak is going on up there in West Virginia? You got like the Twilight Zone stuff going. You got people with R's behind their names. I guess it's R I N O, Republican in name only. R E T A R D. Yeah. They. Oh, you can't say that. And sp- I didn't say it. I spelled it. Oh, and by the way, you need to pull that story because we're going to hammer that hard tomorrow. Uh, do you guys know? We did a. Remember, Jared, we did a. Uh, some college in Illinois was they passed out pamphlets that said you you shouldn't say this you shouldn't say no homo because it it you know it offends oh, yeah, homos. Yeah, yeah. Well, the University of Michigan has gone full retard, and you should never, ever go full retard. See, it's it's a public service announcement, so you can say it. You should never, yeah, public service announcement. 
uh, brought to you by uh, Robert Downey Jr. Never go full retard. But anyway, they went there. And so they, they had this whole entire uh, political correctness, gender neutral speech program that they're forcing on people at the University of Michigan. And we're going to put that in tomorrow's, in Friday's uh, bonus hour. We're going to hammer that like a three pound sledge. Okay. I, I have a gift for you. All right. So anyway, but I, that this that whole thing just led me to that. So, folks, I don't know what's going on in West Virginia, but help me. Help me understand why well, we, Republicans are acting like Democrats and Democrats are acting like Republicans. And help me to understand why people up there have to be peasants and the government has to treat them like that. And we hope that you kick this. these people out. We have went over this before that it doesn't matter what political party you're affiliated with. You're a scumbag now. Well, I know it, it's, it's pathetic. There's a very small amount of politicians that um, that have cojones. Yeah, I I probably know of two or maybe three. Albert Guillory is. Yeah, he's got cojones. Yeah, and you know what? There's a lot of good politicians coming out of the state of Louisiana. Albert Guillory is one, and Bobby Jindal is another one. Do you see what Jindal said to uh, to uh, Comrade Barry that he needs to get? We, we've got the. Uh, we have the medieval Christian problem uh, under control. Uh, you need to deal with the modern Muslim problem. Oh, when no. Comrade Barry came out and he's like, well, in the Crusades, the Christians committed atrocities against Islam. All right, first of all, we don't know that that was true. But second of all, that was you have to go back to like 1200 A.D., for an example of Christians using religion to force their way on people. Well, hold on a second. If he's saying – if he's comparing Muslim – the Muslim acts to the Crusades and no. he said that the Crusades are wrong, then – No, he's not. He's not. He's saying that we need to cut Islam a break because Christians aren't so perfect. And you Christians committed the Crusades and those were bad and blah, 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 blah. So, no, you, you think – what do you think Barry's like actually yeah. – Well, I thought he was trying to uh, – I just was trying you, to – you, you I, I don't listen Barry, to anything he says. You think Comrade Barry was actually comparing the modern Islam to the Crusades? No, he was saying that the Crusades happened, therefore we can't judge Islam because they happened. So he's going back to 1200 AD to find an example to support his, his argument. Anyway, the point is, is Bobby Jindal, he posted, put out a tweet and he said, Mr. President or Comrade Barry or whatever he called him, he said, we have that whole medieval Christian problem under control. Uh, we need to deal with the modern Muslim problem. Can, <laughs> and that was awesome. That's good. Yeah. Bobby Jindal, Bobby freaking Jindal needs to be the president of the United States. Bobby but he's too good. Jindal. He's too good. Uh so anyway, long story short, we got good politicians. We got some good guys coming out of Louisiana. Uh, now the next thing we're, we're going to dovetailing in with the uh, you know the you can't be allowed to own body armor and you can't be allowed to own black rivals and you can't be allowed to own night vision. We've got another story and this just broke and fortunately it's just kind of simmering. People have they're not taking it too seriously. Uh, I checked Brownells yesterday, and they have magazines in stock. I was afraid that all of a sudden there would be this huge run and they'd all be gone again. Uh, this comes to us from the Microsoft News Broadcasting Company. <laughs> and it says, lawmakers introduce measure to ban high-capacity magazines. First of all, they're standard capacity, so piss off. But second of all, Michelle Richenick did this story. Thank you for actually having the guts to put your name on this atrocity. A group of lawmakers introduced a measure in Washington on Thursday, this would be a week ago today, that aims to end the sale of large capacity ammunition used by mass shooters in Newtown, Colorado, Aurora, or Newtown, Aurora, Tucson, and Fort Hood. Large right. capacity ammunition? Yes. It says the opening story, apparently they don't have copywriters at the, the Microsoft uh, news or broadcasting they do company. And they are all. They're all retards. Yeah, and they, they all went full retard. Yeah, and they're like, oh, that sounds good to me. They shouldn't have the large ammo capacities. Because, you know, these these magazines, these high capacity mag they're ammunition. And once you shoot them, then they're gone. Okay. Remember we, we've Diana to get? Yeah, we've hit on this twice, so I have to play this real quick. 
You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, and it says, first of all, let, let's talk. All right. Newtown, Aurora, and Tucson. Um, Newtown was failure of gun-free zone. Aurora Movie Theater, uh, the theater had signs that it was a gun-free zone. Tucson was out in the open, and that was a failure of the bodyguards in that in that instance. And Fort Hood was a 100% gun-free zone because it was a military base, and it was committed by a jihadist who was running around screaming Aloha Snack Bar as he was murdering people. So how about instead of banning large-capacity ammunition, we might want to ban Muslims. We might want to ban public schools. Maybe we should ban movie theaters. Maybe we should stop people from going to them. But Fort Hood was just workplace violence. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So well, they can't use that. In yeah, that, and, and the, that's what when that dude was sawing that woman's head off in, in Oklahoma with a knife scream and Aloha snack bar, that was just isolated. That was an isolated incident. You can't – you just can't take a broad brush and paint – you know, people with a broad brush. It's just one person. Well, one person times a thousand, but still, it's just the, one person. The bill would ban importation, sale, manufacture, transfer, or possession of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. Who said 10 rounds is a, a where did standard? This, where did 10 come from? Where did this, it's this magical. Uh, uh, what is the standard capacity for an M16A2 rifle? And 10 now. Uh, I apparently. think it's 30. Well, all right. Folks, before you get your, your panties all twisted up, take a moment, untwist them. Because here's what I'm going to tell you. And a lot of cool heads have already said this. They're like, this bill has no hope of passage. It's dead on arrival. It's not going to pass because, thankfully, even though they're um, mealy mouth Charlie Brown kind of people, at least most of the people in Congress, in the Senate, that have an R behind their names – they're smart enough not to pass any more gun control. They're at least that smart. They, they might not have the courage to uh, repeal Obamacare and protect the borders and so forth, but they do have enough sense to not put forward another crime bill like they did in 94. So when you say to yourself, <laughs> well, why, all right, why did they do this? Oh, and, and the reps, that the co-sponsors – are from slave states. Surprise! Co-sponsors Elizabeth Etsy of Connecticut and Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey, both Democrats, both scumbags, both uh, communists. Yeah, scumbags, socialists, and communists. Go ahead and write me a letter and tell me I'm wrong. Uh, well, a why do they why do they have these people as the sponsors? Because they're in safe districts. Because they know that they have enough slaves, they have enough tax slaves, they have enough stupid people that are going to go ahead and keep reelecting these people like Sheila Jackson Lee uh, in, in Houston. And Houston, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should wake up every morning and look down at the floor. You shouldn't even be able to look in a mirror. You should be so, so ashamed of yourself for allowing that person to occupy public office. But I digress. What? Uh, how far what, are you? Uh, no, I, the, the stupidity yes. is, is it so bad that you're like hurting? Is it hurt your brain? Apparently, ninety percent of the American public supports common sense gun safety measures. Well, if you word, if you take a a survey and you you can word any survey to get the answers that you want to get. That that's it. That has been done time and, and time again. And you can again. survey. Uh, the people that you want to get. Well, yeah, you, you 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 call people in the middle of the day. If you go to New call York, call houses in the middle of the day, and all you're going to get is welfare recipients and retirees. Yep. Everybody else, all the productive people in America are actually out working because they have to pay taxes so that the other half of America can sit on their fat, lazy rumps and watch Ellen during the day or The View or whatever. And the rest of us got to get out and bust our asses 72 hours a week so that we can make money for these slugs to sit around on their butts and go get their nails done. So those are the people that you call in the middle of the day and get their opinion. But anyway... Let's get back to the high-capacity ammunition thing. It doesn't have any hope of passage. So why bother? They know this. They're not stupid. They understand that this is not going to get a floor vote. It's not going to go to the Senate. They're not going to pass it back and forth and amend it and send it to the president. It's not going to happen. 
So why do it? Why do it? Because, number one, they have to establish the narrative. They have to establish the argument that, well, maybe we're not going to get it done this time, but this is something, this is an idea whose time has come. This is an idea that really deserves open and honest debate and discussion. And we're willing to compromise. Maybe they'll bump it up to 12. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, and also, when they throw this garbage out, what does that do? Well, that forces people or that makes people fight it. So it's it's like fighting this non-existent battle or the, not non-existent, but it's a battle that you've already won, but you still have to fight it because if you don't, if they don't come out and say, hey, this is stupid and you're a retard, uh, if they don't do that, then you're basically just accepting the fact that it's well, it's a worthy argument. It's like the uh, – I don't really believe in West Virginia that they're going to get enough votes to ban the night vision. I don't think it's going to happen. I think there's enough reasonable, uh, intelligent people in the, the Senate – and the House up there to say, no, that's a stupid idea. We're not going to turn people into criminals by doing that. But what are they doing? They're establishing the narrative that, well, this needs to be talked about so that they can come back and talk about it next year, the year after that. And you're, What did I tell you, folks? They did this crap in the 90s with government health care. They put it out there. They made a big deal about it. It got defeated. Everyone was like, Whew, we dodged that bullet. We got it defeated. But what did they do? They spent all this time, effort, and money establishing the fact that the government should take over the health care. And 20 years later, bingo, bango, we're, we've been screwed. We've been hosed. We've been bamboozled. Because you get enough stupid people, they're like, well, I can kind of understand. You're a moron. Shut up. And uh, it, the folks, and, and all these, uh, here's more here's more turds. Uh, turds from Maryland, turds from Connecticut, turds from New Jersey, all these slave states where the people are already enslaved. And that's the thing is you get somebody from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, et al., Massachusetts, do I need Maryland, do I need to keep going? You get these people, and they've already been convinced, well, our people are slaves. The people of Maryland are, are tax slaves. People of Connecticut, Massachusetts, they're all tax slaves. They're forbidden. They have to get special permission from the government to even buy a gun. So we should make the whole country that way. Because in their minds, that's the way it should be. Because people just can't be trusted with these big, evil, mean, nasty magazines. I mean, uh, bad things could happen. Well, why is that? Why do bad things happen? Why do bad things happen like this? And all these situations that we pointed out, the the gun-free zones. Tell me again there, uh, Democrat whip Steny Hoyer of Maryland. Tell me how gun-free zones work, how, how many people have been saved because of a plastic sign or because of another rule or another law. That would be how many? Uh, none. Well, you see what the story says. It says uh... – the gunman used a 30-round high-capacity magazine to fire 154 shots in less than five minutes. I have a question. Uh, one, this was a gun-free zone. So why did this dude have a gun in it? And two, why did this piece of human debris have five minutes to shoot 154 shots? Why did this not end in five 30, seconds, 10 30 seconds, seconds, 30 seconds? One minute? Yeah. Why yeah. didn't it end yeah. in, and one minute's a long time. If well, if it, they would have had something present that could have stopped him, somebody with a gun. No, you can't have guns around kids. Kids should have seen the guns and they'll die. It should have been over them. in thirty seconds or less. And he's. They say he he fired X number of rounds. They say he fired one hundred and fifty four shots. How do they know? Well, okay, let's just say that they found brass or kind of bullet holes or whatever. It doesn't matter. But let's just let, let's take it for face value. He used a thirty round high capacity magazine. First of all, dipstick. It says in the story, it says he the gunman used A, and in the English language, A means single, 30-round high-capacity magazine, no S at the end, 
to fire 154 shots. Now, Jared, do you own any AR-15 magazines? Yeah. Have you ever been able to cram 154 rounds into a 30-round mag? Um. I've never tried, but I'm going to go ahead and say that that's impossible. Well, and here this is the quality of the copy editors at the Microsoft News Broadcasting Company. Is they couldn't even someone said, "Hey, uh, that sentence doesn't make any sense. You can't use a single thirty round." So maybe he did this, Jared. Maybe according to them, he fired thirty rounds out of the magazine. He had the single empty magazine. And then he sat down on the floor and he reloaded it. And then shot some more, and then reloaded well, it, and shot some more. Or maybe he brought multiple magazines, even though it doesn't say so in the story. Maybe he had more than one, and that he was able to reload. So let's say in a situation like this, where you're only allowed to have ten round magazines. So in order to fire 154 shots, you have to bring 15 of those things with you. But if you're completely unopposed and every, and the you know what do they teach kids at schools today and parents or not parents the teachers hide under the desk or throw throw cans at them uh, we got that you can throw uh, food cans at them but if your defensive technique is tell everyone to lay on the ground and crawl under their desks you can just walk around as long as you need but no big deal. Folks, it's asinine. It's a lie. Stop believing the lie. Stop allowing these people to perpetuate the lies. And, Jared, did you see there's a hashtag campaign? These people in Congress make me want to vomit. They're so disgusting. The hashtag campaign is say no to the number two more ammo. Say no to more ammo. And it says, Elizabeth Etsy is calling for gun safety reform. That's what she's... I don't even know what that is. Gun safety reform. How about she... They just put these words together. They was like, oh, we're going to put some words together because because people are stupid and they don't know they're emotion driven because their brains don't get enough protein and animal fat to actually think analytically they can't problem solve they're just a bunch of emotional monsters out there like oh, yeah, give me a marker and a piece of cardboard i'll stand out here you're a moron stop allowing these morons to have this oh Lord in heaven. Jared, what do you want to talk about now? Um, I'm going to end this segment, this uh, story, on from a, with a quote from Vince Lombardi. And let's see, what what other story do we have? We have concealed carry. We got the concealed carry, and, and, uh, and we got two basically concealed carry panic stories where sandwich makers and uh, metrosexuals are panicked about uh, concealed carry. Okay, well, I was, I was reading this book again last night. It's called Strive to Excel. Um, the will and wisdom of Vince Lombardi. And it's really, it's filled with quotes from him and uh, quotes about him from people that were there present in his life. And I'm going to type, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to type, I can hear your typing over there. Ah. So I'm going to type this, but no, I'm going to read this quote from Lombardi. And then I want to end the entire show with a different quote. Okay. So Rock on. This one, it says, it's. I think Dad posted this on Facebook or something a while back because I didn't realize where you got this quote from. Oh. But anyway, it says, It's hard to have patience with a society that has sympathy only for the underprivileged. We must have sympathy for the doer, too. We speak of freedom. Sometimes I think we confuse it with license. Everything is done to strengthen the rights of the individual at the expense of responsibility to the church, state, and authority. We are in the midst of a rebellion a struggle for the hearts and souls and minds of us all. We must help the underprivileged, certainly, but let us also respect success. And that, uh, this, it sounds like he wrote this, like, today. Yeah, no kidding. That's crazy. It's like, he, I don't even know when he said this quote, it doesn't tell you, but obviously it wasn't today, so obviously the same problems existed when he wrote this quote or said this quote, and why do they still exist? Because mm, we're not taking care of business. But anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's another quote over here that's it's more of a, of a positive quote I want to end the whole show with. So. All right. Well, 
Before we get into the second half of our show, let's uh, thank our sponsors, Brownells of Brownells.com. Excess Sights, the fastest sights in any light. Velocity Triggers at VelocityTriggers.com. It's super simple. Check them out. SWAT Fuel at SWATFuel.com. And, you know, we were remiss, and you, you co-host, allowed me to be remiss yesterday because we didn't promote the uh, promo code, SOTG2014. If you guys go to SWATFuel.com and you make an or- a purchase, you want to use your promo code because you're going to save 20% off your total order. So make sure you're doing that. Yeah, you're right. Twenty. Anyway, so I call upon you to go to shenanigans Facebook and go to Brownells, go to Excess Sites, go to Velocity Triggers, and go to Swap Fuel and thank them. We need you to thank them as well. We thank them, but show your support as well. Thank them for supporting Student of the Gun Radio. Okay. This uh, next one is... Uh, comes to us from the winfieldcourier.com, and that would be in Kansas. Uh, apparently, the Kansas State Legislature is taking up a bill that would allow individuals to carry uh, firearms without a permit. That would be constitutional carry. They have their own form of constitutional carry that they've proposed in the state of Kansas. So you're like, okay, well, rock on. Big deal, right? I mean, it is a big deal. It's a good thing. It's a step in the right. Uh, it basically, all constitutional carry does is it goes back to where we were supposed to be 200 years ago. And we got away from that over the years. We kind of forgot about that whole United States Constitution thing and, uh, you know, the peasantry can't be trusted and so forth. And so a lot of states, many states, are in the process of reaffirming the Constitution. Well, somebody in Kansas has got themselves right. They're scared. And one of you guys shared this with us, so thank you. But uh, this is a letter to the editor. This is a letter to the Winfield Courier by a concerned citizen. We're going to go ahead and read you this letter. I read in Sunday's Wichita Eagle that our Kansas legislature is considering a proposal that would allow individuals to carry a concealed firearm without a permit. And... uh, just as a sidebar, criminals already do that. Dumas. Uh, that is a disgusting and, at the same time, insane idea. The proposal seems to be predicated on the assumption that this will help lure gun manufacturing in the gun manufacturing industry to Kansas. This sounds, at best, like a desperate attempt to justify inept budgetary, deci- budgetary decisions made at a state level, and at worst, another interesting form of prostitution. The memory of the recent shooting in Winfield that involved a concealed carry without a permit. Well, if it was concealed carry without a permit, then the person was breaking the law. So criminals are going to carry guns regardless, Dumas. Should be fresh on everyone's mind. It would seem that we are taking one more step back in time to the days of the wild, wild west. Oh, blood in the streets. People are going to be shooting each other over parking spaces. I really wonder what's next for citizens who have no desire to own or carry a handgun. Move to UK. We will at some point be, will we at some point be required to carry a concealed weapon? If you are concerned, as I am, about further relaxation of restrictions on firearms, I encourage you to write and urge Senator Steve Abrams to oppose Senate Bill 45, signed Charles Hunter Winfield. All right, first of all, Charles, we're going to go ahead and change your name to Gatherer because you are not a hunter. You are a gatherer. You are weak. You are a puke face. But thank you for giving us the opportunity to make fun of your weak puke face self. And they're like, hey, Paul, you can't make fun of people on your radio show. Actually, I can uh, because they publicly posted their stupidity. And I'm just commenting on the stupidity that they put out there for the public to read. What's funny about this is uh, I've got this in the show notes. I saved the link. And uh, the person that sent it to us, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have your name on the tip of my tongue. But uh, they sent me, they sent us one. They said, oh, uh, they pulled the link down to this stupid uh, letter to the editor. You know, it might not still be up, but we've got it, and we have the link to it. So, uh, so um, it sounds like a metrosexual in Kansas has got a fright. Now, that dovetails directly in. And go team. Hey, uh, if you guys live up in Kansas, support this SB45. 
Because let's face it, the end goal for all freedom-loving people, the end goal of liberty is constitutional carry. That's it. Oh, And we've got another one here. And this comes to us from WMUR.com slash politics slash bill would allow concealed carry without a special permit. And you're like, what? That is scary. That is scary. And would, this isn't would, from Kansas, though. This is actually from the Granite State. Is the, that New Hampshire? Yeah, that's New Hampshire. Good call, Jared. Yeah, apparently New Hampshire, they are, uh, they've decided that they want to go the same route. I don't as, even know why I knew that, uh, to good be honest job. with you. Good job. You might have actually learned something. Wow. Now, uh, Adam Sexton here is the uh, reporter, and we've got the news story. So it, it's it's only about, oh, it says it's a minute and 51 seconds. Do you want to go ahead and, and uh, do a minute and 51 seconds yeah, I'll of, just, of audio? Yeah, I, I think that they will, the listening audience will appreciate it. Okay. Well, all right, so listen up, folks. This is from, uh, it, it's footage from a recent public forum, and you you may have to break out the duct tape. Because there are some sandwich makers that are really, they really have their panties all twisted up and they're scared. They're scared that people in the Granite State might actually be, oh, there's there's moms for gun sense in the audience. Because apparently they don't have jobs or families to take care of. They have time to go sit in a public forum. So, Jared, go ahead and uh, and drop it like it's hot. Josh, supporters call it constitutional carry. Opponents call it a bad idea. This bill brought out a big crowd today in Concord. In New Hampshire, you can't carry a concealed weapon without one of these permits. A new bill in at the State House seeks to change that. A very simple bill that allows people to carry concealed something they can already do openly. Dozens showed up for a hearing on Senate Bill 116 Thursday, most of them backing what they call a modest change, one they believe would expand freedom for law abiding citizens. Some are even pitching the end of concealed carry permits as a women's rights issue. Research shows that women armed with a weapon of any kind fare better against assailants than do unarmed women. Opponents say the current requirements are already lenient. They tell us they would have had a bigger turnout at this hearing, but they believe many fear standing up in front of gun rights activists they presume are armed. It's an unfair advantage that they have. Um, people really don't like to, as I say, come and stand in front of a firing squad, a group of people with guns. Law enforcement also gives this bill a thumbs down. The Association of Chiefs of Police says eliminating pistol permits would hurt public safety. This would allow kids 13 14 to carry guns concealed because there is no minimum age in new hampshire but gun rights supporters point to vermont where there are no restrictions on concealed carry and no one is confusing the green mountains for the wild west we are the second safest place in the world the only people that beat us out on that was switzerland Backers of this bill are confident it can pass the Republican-controlled House and Senate, but getting it past the governor's desk is another story. Her office says she shares the concerns of law enforcement in regards well, to there's this There's a bill. problem right there. Adam it's Sexton, a WMUR, News 9. <laughs> oh. uh, the police, a well, right. police officer said that they could... Kids could carry 14 and 15. 13 and 14 year olds are going to be. If you, if how old do you have to be to 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 obtain a handgun? Um, apparently 12. How in old New do you Hampshire. have to be to obtain because, a rifle or a shotgun? Because he's, he his 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 thing here is says because there's no minimum age requirement. Uh, uh, yeah, there is. There's already a minimum age requirement to purchase guns. First of all, the 21 thing is bullcrap, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. All right. Step number one: the Association of Chiefs of Police. And the IACP, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, uh, I've learned I learned this probably 20 years ago. Chiefs of police associations are political organizations, and they are Democrat. They are left leaning. They are statists. Okay, the chiefs of police supported the crime bill. The chiefs of police uh, in Ohio were opposed to concealed carry. They were opposed to shall issue concealed carry when it came out. The chiefs of police are a bunch of politicians. The chiefs of police organizations are a bunch of butt-kissing politicians. 
and they kiss the butt of the left. And if you don't like that, tango freaking Sierra, it's true, and it's time to address it. So, and number one, hey, representative of the state, oh, so what you're telling me is that you should be allowed to carry guns because you're special, because you have a polyester uniform on, and you have the right to protect your life. But you peasants out there, you don't have really cool green and blue and brown polyester uniforms, so you can't be trusted because you're just plebes and morons. And this lady, well, we'd have had more people come out, but but gun rights activists are afraid to be around gun carriers. Gun rights activists? Or gun control activists are afraid to be around gun carriers. That's because they're... Because you're a moron. You're an idiot. Well, I was going to say something else, but it's not the bonus hour. So. Oh, I know. It's not the bonus hour, so we've got to watch it. And it says it's going to pass the House and the Senate, but the governor's office says she is in agreement with, well, you know what that means, New Hampshire? You need to get rid of her and put in someone who's not a her. I know. there are There have been cases where there were good female governors. I know that. They're rare, and most of them are ruled by – most female governors, like most female people, are ruled by their emotions. Sorry, it's true. It's in the freaking DNA. If you don't like it, Tango Sierra, write a letter. But it's true. You know, We every, have a bunch it, of irrational women. Every woman, every woman that I have talked to – um, maybe it's my choice of women to, that I talk to. I don't know. But every woman that I talk to agrees with the fact that women first judge, they first rule a judgment off of their emotions. And yes. then they move on to logic. Mm-hmm. And, so that's but most of is. them don't move. They don't get to that they, point. Yeah, they don't get to that point. And it's, you know, it's cognitive dissonance. It's intellectual dishonesty. When you hit these people with the facts, when you hit them with, well, you don't like guns. No, guns are bad. Guns are dangerous. Guns guns kill. Guns make bad, blah, blah, blah. So guns kill. So the presence of guns makes people kill. Yes, yes, it does. If we eliminate guns, say, okay, well, I propose that tomorrow that every state, local, and county police agency turn in their guns and trade them for rubber batons. What do you think? We can't do that. Cold Steel makes some pretty cool why rubber not? whip things that you could use. Yeah, we just need to give them, like, sham jocks. Well, why not? Well, they need those. Why do they need those? Because cause there are criminals out there that are bad, and, and they need them to protect themselves and to protect the community. But the police aren't responsible for protecting you as an individual, only the community as a whole. I want to go make me a sandwich and shut up. That's what I'm going to say to you. All of you whiny liberal moms and all you metrosexuals up there in New Hampshire, you need to just shut up and go make me a sandwich and let the adults talk here. And they are – and the thing is, is uh, what they they said here is New Hampshire is already, quote, an open carry state. So you can – it's kind of like the way it is in Mississippi. You can open carry without a permit and – You have to have a permit to conceal carry. Okay, great. So what all they're saying is, look, people can already carry guns without a permit in the open. So why do they need a permit to cover it with a shirt? I don't get it. It makes too much sense. All right, Jared wants to go ahead and close the uh, show with a positive note. He's got his positive quote for you guys. We're going to give you something positive. And this is going to drive you, uh, all of you public show listeners, this this quote's going to hopefully uh, keep you through till Monday. Now, if you are a grad program listener, we're going to have a show for you tomorrow. And like we said, we're going to take this University of Michigan political correctness and we're going to nuke it right out of the water. <laughs> I I anticipate that we're going to have fun with that. We're on Monday or what no, did you no, say? No, no, no. The University of Michigan. For pe- the grad. It's going to be grad program. Okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Calm down, I, crazy. I'm glad you said something about the quote because I actually forgot. All right. Go ahead and, and drop it like it's hot. Okay. This is also from Vince Lombardi. Uh, It's actually close to the other quote. But anyway, it says, In a tolerant society, there is sympathy only for the misfit, maladjusted, criminal, the loser. It is also time to cheer for, 
to stand up for the doer, the achiever, to recognize the problems, to recognize the winner. And I agree with that. Amen, Vince Lombardi. And, and if you guys don't have uh, any of the Vince Lombardi books or quotes or some, anything like that, it, they're, they're well worth finding and getting. Uh, do yourself a favor. Google Vince Lombardi or duck it. Yeah, there's a bunch on Amazon. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, uh, if you're a public person or a public listener, we will talk to you on Monday. If you're a grad program member, we will talk to you tomorrow. It, Remember, if you're not a grad program member and you want to become one, go to studentofthegunradio.com. And if you guys didn't notice, I completely redesigned the <laughs> Student of the Gun Radio website. Yeah, so that's go true. go check it out. And you can click on the right-hand side there. There's a little thing to sign up for the grad program. Yes. So uh, do that. Remember, you're a beginner once. And you should be a student for life.